I'm Dr. Kira Dinsky, and my passion has always been predicting the future. I started studying in the Technion when I was 15 and finished three degrees. During my PhD, what we did was taking all the news since 1851 till today and build predictive models that predict riots, genocides, and disease outbreaks based on patterns in the news. Today, I'm the co-founder of Sales Predict, where we bring predictive analytics into businesses trying to predict who's going to churn and who's going to buy by looking in patterns in data and on the web itself. Today, we apply pro bono some of those models in order to predict what causes cancer. We get information from different hospitals, apply predictive analytics algorithm, and see what correlates with cancer. In my PhD, I took all the news since 1851 till today from the New York Times. This type of information from the New York Times was completely free text. So we build algorithms that actually read those newspapers and look for patterns. Just like a human would do if they had all the time in the world and all the data sets and data in the world. We found a pattern that predicts cholera and were able to predict the first cholera outbreak in Cuba in 130 years. The pattern our system found was that if you have storms coming after long droughts, the probability of cholera after those storms is much higher. And this is especially happening in certain types of countries. Okay, countries with low GDP, and in addition to that, they don't have enough clean water. The way our system found that it took all the news and other data sets, like Wikipedia, government data sets, GDPs of those places. It crunched all this data and found this pattern. The interesting thing about that is that this pattern has been repeating itself for tens of thousands of times. But for us, we only knew that cholera is coming after storms. This information is extremely interesting because cholera can be treated very easily. Because if you predict it in time, you send clean water in time, and you can drop mortality rates from 50% to less than 1%. We were able also to predict the riots in Sudan. We found a pattern that if you have a certain product which is subsidized by the government, and it stopped being subsidized, then you're going to have student riots. After those student riots, the probability of government instability is much higher. This is exactly what happened with Egypt, with the bread prices, and Sudan with the gas prices. Today, in Sales Predict, we apply similar algorithm to find patterns in the data of businesses in order to predict who's going to churn and who's going to buy. Our algorithm is looking for who bought in the past and who didn't buy in the past, grips all the data that our customers have and adds information from the web. How big is this company? How fast are they growing? What are they reading about them on the news? Who is this person that's approaching your website? And tries to find patterns that correlate with renewal and actually buying a product. Today, we apply similar algorithms pro bono in order to understand how cancer works. We got data from hospitals since the 70s of people blood tests and who had cancer and who didn't. And we apply predictive algorithms to build classifiers to predict who's going to have cancer or not based on this information. Today, more and more businesses apply predictive analytics to be more informed about how to optimize their own conversions. A business who doesn't plan will not survive in the competitive business world. I believe that applying those type of techniques, but in the medical world, will also save the human race.